Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hi there. Welcome to this, the 67th, 67th episode of A Couple Takes on MS. Hi, this is Dan Digman. And hi, it's me, Jennifer Digman. Welcome to this show. I'm, I'm excited. I'm always excited about our shows. Um, if you just a uh, quick update or um, background on who we are, Dan Digman and I've had multiple sclerosis for this is my 19th year living with this disease, and I'm with my lovely wife of 13 years, Jennifer. And I also have been living with multiple sclerosis for the past 21 years. And interestingly enough, Dan and I met in an MS program some seven, almost 17 almost years 17 ago. Years. We're like busting out a lot of numbers Lots right of numbers. now. But we met at an MS program where we both went into it just thinking it would be a good afternoon of education about multiple sclerosis. And we met, fell in love. I mean, it sounds like a a fairy tale story, but it It, kind of sort of is. So you are my Sleeping Beauty, and if I may be your Prince Charming, you are my my Prince Charming, and now everyone's throwing up inside their mouths. Okay, so collect your thoughts and everything. But then a couple takes on MS, and we look at this from you know look at different um, issues, things from the perspectives of a man living with multiple sclerosis. A woman living with multiple sclerosis. And a man who still is able to walk. And I'm rolling because I have been in a wheelchair for about 16 years. And then we just, we have different perspectives. You know, not incredibly different, but we have different ways of seeing things and just different realities. We're both caregivers for each other. But let's be honest, Dan does, like, the majority of the caregiving for us. We aren't going to argue. No, we're not going to argue because you'd win. Um, See, that's a good answer. Exactly. We've been married. But anyway, so what we're talking about today, and this is very exciting because we're, it's the end of March, and coming up or just happening, if the, you hear this show after March 28th on March 28th, and mark your calendar if it's ahead, or even mark it for the next year and every year thereafter, but coming up on March 28th is the second annual Progressive MS Day. So Progressive MS Day 2019, and whereas I'm living with relapsing remitting MS, you, Jennifer, are living with a progressive form. I am, and as you may know, multiple sclerosis can be classified as relapsing remitting, which is what Dan has, secondary progressive, which is what I've been living with, and there's also a primary progressive form of the disease. And according to the National MS Society, I believe, an estimated 85% of the people who are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis are initially diagnosed with relapsing remitting MS. But most of these people will eventually develop secondary progressive MS, which is characterized by a more steady progression of symptoms and disability and fewer or no relapses. And now, in the same kind of way, I'm reading that approximately... Half of the people with relapsing remitting MS will develop into secondary progressive MS within 10 to 20 years of diagnosis. 
And Dan's his his mango health. Did you did you hear my did you hear my music? I did, and that was to tell you that you it's need to take, to take your my disease modifying disease therapy. Modifying therapy. And but but I was making a point here, babe. Exactly, and I'm 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 doing a show here, babe. Okay, Talk to me I know. About your point. But the point being that it says according to this information I've read on the internet that approximately half of all people with relapsing remitting MS will develop. Secondary progressive MS within 10 to 20 years of diagnosis. This being your 19th year, how does that make you feel? I'm like I'm living on borrowed time and I got one more year to, 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 to stay in relapse or remitting. Do you really? No, I don't. I don't. Um, Are you scared of knowing that potentially your disease could progress? Well, I think that's just something that we all live with. When you have multiple sclerosis, I mean that's it's a it's a chronic progressive disease of the central nervous system, and so I think we're all we're all concerned, scared. I mean I don't like stop. I'm not like nervous. I'm not nervous. I mean obviously, um, but yeah, I think you know because you know once once it goes, there's no getting it back. I know that there's research, there's trials, there's things, there's medical stuff, the developments that are helping us to regain function, but that's, I mean, it's not... It's kind of far off. Yeah, it's not readily available. You can't, it's not like going to the drugstore and buying or not going, getting a disease-modifying therapy to slow the progression. It's not a common thing. Um, but I think... Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm con- always concerned. I mean, this is why we take our disease-modifying therapy. This is why we do stuff. However, this is where what, what I'm happy with, I think, because as a man who's living with his wife who has a progressive form of MS, I think that's why I'm... I think elated might be a, a tone either to exaggerate it or tone right. down but i'm i'm very excited that they are, that that this progressive ms day is a thing because i think there's so much that um in the past it's been um all on the focus has been all on the relapsing remitting and newly diagnosed and everything but it's just like that you Jennifer i mean progressive ms day i mean did you feel when because I, I think Genentech is a um, company that's kind of, you know, helped take the lead on this or is among the leaders to make this, you know, uh, a focus. Well, I, to be perfectly honest, and I don't want to sound like a jilted ex-girlfriend, but for a long time, I was I was recategorized, if you want to say that, with secondary progressive MS. About five, six years into my diagnosis. So in that span of time, that 16 years, 15 years, I have watched all sorts of new medication come on the market that hasn't been indicated for me. You know, they think God have been there for you, Dan, with your relapsing or emitting MS. But for me, there really hasn't been anything. I am fortunate that I was able to take a drug called the Vantrone, 15 years ago that just kind of, you know, stopped my progression in its track. I haven't regained anything that I've lost, but I certainly, you know, I that stopped my aggressive disease. But with that, you know, there hasn't been a lot else out there for me. And then last year, was it 2018, that... Uh, a, a medication came on the market specifically for more progressive forms of the disease. And how, how did how did that make you feel? I mean, when there was that first medicine approved for treating or I, modifying therapy for progressive forms of multiple sclerosis, I was very excited, and I thought finally because. The medication that I had taken 15 years, I had taken all the the amount of the medication I could take. So I was maxed out. I couldn't take Navantrone anymore. So again, for that, like, 
probably 13 years, I had no disease-modifying therapy. And then when, when this drug came out in 2018, that was especially indicated for progressive forms of MS, I was excited, and I thought, finally, and, you know, I, again, don't want to sound like an angry old girlfriend, but I was like, what took you guys so long? But then I realized, it doesn't matter what took you so long, it's here, and that makes a big difference for these people. And so that that's why I think it was so, so important. I think that what uh, when this came out last year, when, when there was this, the last year was first ever Progressive MS Day, it was to highlight the resources, the programs, and the services needed for the more debilitating forms of MS, and as a way to show support for those with progressive MS and to um, let people know, educate, and form awareness on this because we can look at you, you can look at me. I mean, we're, we're showing two very different forms of the disease and, and what it can do. But it is progressive MS can be isolating. You know, certainly going along the lines of progression you may be a little more limited in your your ability to walk or you you may rely more heavily on mobility aids like a wheelchair or a scooter and that can be isolating let's be perfectly honest you know getting out in a wheelchair can it can impinge upon your ability to get out or you may not feel as comfortable going places because your MS has progressed a little. So having a, a day, that day devoted, dedicated to the people living with pro more progressive forms of the disease was very comforting and very empowering. What was that? I mean, because we talked about then um, when they came out with a drug for progressive multiple sclerosis, then what's it like then when there was a special day or a day set aside specifically to pay attention? I mean, because on some levels, um, and now we're, we're going rogue from, from, from said script, but it's like, what was that like? I mean, because you've often, we've talked about this, and I don't know about everybody out there, um, and I've written about it, just how when you were first diagnosed and when people are first diagnosed and they always say, quote, unquote, I, I, I was afraid I would end up in a wheelchair, which thereby then signifies um, progressive multiple sclerosis. Does this help? I mean, what's that like then to actually have something where this is a day where it's no longer something to to be a obviously people are, you know people are afraid of that but i mean it's just something where it's not hidden anymore so it's like it's point blank calling attention to this reality and not being ashamed about it and i think afraid is a good word that you chose and i think progressive ms day anything that i saw in the advertisements or the commercials or the print ads Last year, they showed people in wheelchairs that it wasn't the big bed, you know, it wasn't the scary, the monster living under the bed. You know, if you have to use a wheelchair, that is your freedom. I mean, Dan, if I didn't have my chair, just look at what I couldn't do. I would be stuck. But because I'm comfortable and I'm able to get in my wheelchair and roll and I am so much more capable, and I think that having the progressive MS day, to seeing those ads, to seeing those faces that look like me, I just thought it was incredibly comforting, and it did just make me feel, not that I felt different than the normal people with multiple sclerosis, but I just felt like my disease was kicked up a little bit, and I was like... I don't see myself in the faces of the relapsing or admitting. And that too could be because I'm older um, or the newly diagnosed. I feel that there's a there's a, def a definite line between newly diagnosed 
And, and the somebody, seasoned veteran. Well, seasoned veteran living with progressive, a progressive form of the disease. And, and not, not to put you on the spot, but, you know, when you talk about, like, you know, the, how the, the day was showing people or the images of people in wheelchairs and living, I mean, you were one of those people. Yes. How, like, when there are the promotions and everything, how does that make you feel then that you're giving like a voice, an appearance, a story that your story is being included in those for, you know, increasing awareness about progressive forms of multiple sclerosis. I think it may sound trite or it may sound predictable, but I feel blessed that I'm able to share my story of how I deal with my multiple sclerosis, but more importantly, I'm able to share how we deal with the progressive form of the disease. You know, we, you, have, you, my loving husband, have to be strong, and you have to, you are there for me. And I think that what's really good about getting to share my story is I get to share our story of how we can maintain marriage and life, and and just you know, it's it's pretty. And I looked, I mean, any sort of print ad or any any of the advertisement, we look really good, but there, it's true, it's honest. You know, we talk about how hard it is. I say something about, boy, I just wish I would be able to fix my hair. You know, the progressive form of the disease has taken away my hands, which I talk about it, you know, quite often on this show. But because... I'm getting, because progressive MS is getting awareness, and people are more comfortable talking about it and sharing their stories, I think we're going to be that much closer to finding some sort of treatment or something to help so that I can use my hands or, you know, that will be, if someone is developing, going from the relapsing or admitting to the more progressive form of the disease, he or she will hopefully be that much more comfortable asking or seeing positive representations of what a progressive form of the disease. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. I, I th- well, it is just the perspective. Like, how, how this, I mean, when we're doing Progressive MS Day, what, I, you know, that they're, that, that, that they're doing it a second year. Yes. What do, what do you hope it does then? I mean, for the general population, what do you, I guess for them, what do you hope it does for you, for us? For us, I think... I think it's um, something... Excuse me, that was I, a I, big I, I, old yawn. I'm I was, sorry I was about that. Buying, I, was, I, I was buying some time. You were filling some dead yawn space. Yes. But I think I hope, and I, I like to... To again speak for you, but I think seeing what we saw from last year, we just recently watched a video from the first ever Progressive MS Day, and today, so a year ago, I'm like, I really don't look that different. Like, I'm still as active as I was, and I'm still, and it's just a good gauge, and I think that's one thing with the Progressive MS. That hopefully it'll it'll help people monitor their health a little more closely, see how they are progressing, and it'll allow us to network. I'm looking forward to meeting Kevin and Jean someday. Is it Jeannie? I, I and I'm looking forward to meeting other people with a progressive just form of the disease. Other people and their their spouses or caregivers, their partners in crime. So I think that, you know, we, we do a lot with multiple sclerosis and having this day specifically for people living with a progressive form of the disease, that'll give us more opportunity to to meet new people, share stories, tips. I was going to say, build, building the community where it's just like you no longer, obviously when you're first diagnosed, you're first diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and I don't know how 
um, people out there um, listening, but it's like how scared you were when you were first diagnosed. You're living with with this disease, um, and it was a scary time, and you're just like, okay, I need to find other people who have multiple sclerosis who can help me, and then all of a sudden you don't feel alone. So then this this is building up to another question for you, comma Jennifer. Yes. That... So what was that like then? I mean, or did you feel alone? I mean, after you lived with the disease for X amount of years, what happened at when you'd ask me, am I scared of being quote unquote elevated to a secondary progressive MS? Were you scared of that? And at what point and did, did it come and like just one time the doctor thereby declared that you, Jennifer, have secondary progressive MS, or was it just sort of implied and then you just accepted it? I was progressing, you know, I was diagnosed in 97, and within the first year, year and a half, I had, think, way back to the dark ages of 1997, and there right. were only three disease-modifying treatments available, and I burned through all three of them, looking for something where I could get control of the disease. So when I finally found something, I stayed on that for a while. But then four years later, I just started progressing again to the point where it started becoming difficult to walk. I was falling. And just, I didn't feel that I was on an aggressive enough form of medication. And at that point in time, that is when I changed neurologist. And it was kind of upheaval, but I had to... I had to look for something a little more aggressive, which I did, and that's when I was reclassified, if you want to call it that, with the secondary progressive MS. And I wasn't scared so much, it was just, it seemed inevitable. And I was, I was thankful that I was going to, I want to say that my first neurologist didn't take my disease seriously. But he wasn't being as proactive as I wanted. So when I got my secondary progressive diagnosis and saw a new neurologist, I began treating my disease a little more aggressively. And I think that really helped me. So so then, um, going back to where I'm saying, you know, when you're newly diagnosed, you need to find somebody you feel alone and people don't get it. When you're... Um, reclassified into progressive MS did you have to was it more the same all over again because did you have to go out and find new people who who understood progressive MS or is it just something where those of us in the MS world sure we don't necessarily have the same disease itself as we've talked to snowflake disease and everybody's is different right. did you not feel alone because you had that built-in community I had that built-in community. I had that support system. I had friends, and you know, I had a doctor. I had a group through the National MS Society that I was able to talk to. And just the progression, it seems, it sounds like maybe a little more extreme than it was, but it was kind of a slow, slow progression. And then, but it, like, my support system stayed the same, and I was still the same Jennifer with secondary progressive MS as I was with relapsing or remitting. So I think, does, I mean, again, does that yeah, answer your absolutely. question? Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's just, you know, well, it is just the question, I mean, because, um, you know, with the progressive form, but now we have this day, and I, I, I'm just really excited about it. Um, I think that... Um, I'm excited because it's a nice cap to the month of March. Which is? Which is Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month, the month of March. You know, we have the MS Awareness Week, which was earlier in the month of March. And here at the very end, there is going to be March 28th, Progressive MS Day. And what you can do um, on the day of and in uh, days leading up to it, Get involved on social media um, using a hashtag Progressive MS Day. Um, show pictures of 
how you're overcoming, how you're you're staying on top of moving forward with Progressive MS. So hashtag Progressive MS Day and just join in conversations and get involved with people and make those connections and increase awareness. I mean, because this really yeah, is just continuation of, you know, awareness with for the month of March. And it, you know, and forgive me if I've made this joke before, but I talk about this disease so much that I think someday someone's just going to cure it just to shut me up. And now that there's a special day devoted to progressive MS, I'm going to talk about it that much more because it is a hard disease to live with and it is challenging and we need to be our own best advocates. And so if I talk about it to anyone who will listen, maybe that one person will get something from talking with me or I will get something. You know, there's there's just so much information that needs to be exchanged and shared and I think that that's why this day this day is especially important at the end of MS Awareness Month. Well that's just keeping the conversations going mm -hmm. in that way you know so people don't feel alone and that people can see that there are alternatives there's ways to continue to stay positive to stay because and, and also to show I mean, we don't want to sugarcoat anything because it's, it's hard. It's challenging. I mean, this whole disease is challenging. But it's like, how do you rise above it and move forward? And I encourage people, if you're curious about living with progressive, a progressive form of the disease, or you're the caregiver or spouse of someone living with a progressive form of the disease, just Google Progressive MS Day 2019. And, you know, there's a lot of information out there. A lot of stories, a lot of inspirational things, so that you're not alone. Because, like we always talk about, if you're living with multiple sclerosis, you're one in a million. You know, that new number that there are a million people living with this disease in the United States. So, you're not alone. And if you're living with progressive MS, there's a day, especially for us, coming up March 20th. So, thank you all for listening again. Progressive MS Day 2019 is March 28th. Uh, get involved on social media with hashtag Progressive MS Day. And thanks to Blue Draft Kid for composing the theme music to our show and to the MSME Radio Network for bringing us along for the ride. This has been a couple takes on MS. We'll talk to you next time.